So for today's video, I'm going to be partially picking up on my last video, as well as sort of responding to a video that Stardusk made. Stardusk's video was titled Demographic Decline, Resource Scarcity, and Mechanization. You may notice that the graphic I'm using for this video is lifted straight from his because the central point of this video is going to be relating to the exact same topic regarding the birth rates. However, I want to go into some very different political topics. Now the first thing that I want to draw attention to is the overall pattern of the fertility rates on the world chart. Nearly all of the nations that you would generally think of as west or westernized are listed in the red, whereas nations uh, primarily in Africa and Central America are in the green, essentially meaning that westernized nations have a lower birth rate than is necessary to maintain the population, whereas countries particularly around the equator have higher birth rates where they are meeting or exceeding the birth rate necessary to maintain the population. Now the first thing that you can probably immediately notice if you're looking at this chart is essentially that the world economic crisis can be summed up almost entirely in terms of the birth rates. Countries such as Greece, Germany, and the United States no longer have the number of no young workers necessary to maintain the economy, and they have too many old pensioners essentially taking all the money out of the system. This is one of the inherent factors that is sinking all of these economies, and there's very little being done about it because it's something that's not even in the discussion. And it's not hard to see why. Whenever you look at a chart like this, it seems like absolute tinfoil hat-wearing craziness to say, all westernized nations are going toward an immediate and irreversible economic and societal collapse. Yet, if you just look at these statistics, it's pretty much unavoidable. You essentially have all of your quote-unquote upper or even middle classes breeding themselves out of existence, and the only way that these countries can maintain any sort of economic strength is by employing huge numbers of immigrants to drive the economy. Now, in the modern debate, even mentioning that immigrants are contributing to the economy, that they're being imported in the numbers that they are, is instantly stilted toward one side or the other. Someone will accuse me of being conservative, some kind of crazy liberal. I don't care. I'm not either of those. All I'm interested in is the basic facts. Pretty much every Western nation is headed toward population collapse due to straight up lack of breeding and in all of these countries, the only reason they have any sort of economy still running, if they do have an economy whatsoever, which some of them don't at this point, but if they do have an economy running, it's because they have enough immigrants to drive their economy. Now, Stardusk's video tries to touch in part on mechanization. Um, the only thing that I'll say about that is essentially that a lot of people think that mechanization will essentially take up the slack where even though there aren't enough people around that somehow machines will up our productivity enough so that we can have enough money and enough goods to survive, that's absolutely not happening. It's not working. All you have to do is look around at your world and see the fact that this just doesn't happen. When robots replace human workers at an assembly line, for instance, sure, more cars get made, but who's buying those cars? Uh, you, you aren't employing a human to build the cars, so the human being isn't getting money the human being doesn't have money to buy the cars. You do this with every single industry in your entire society, and what are you left with? You know, how are people going to make money? The way that it's happened for a lot of Western nations, the United States in particular, is that you shift to a service economy. Your country no longer makes anything, which is why we have relied on essentially countries like China to make everything for us. And then everyone in our country are basically preying on each other in a service economy where anytime you need something done, you have to give money to somebody else to do it, and somehow we expect a growing economy out of that. To my mind, however, the central problem with that is that essentially economists are still very slow to catch up with advancements in understanding human nature. And it's really no wonder since the science of understanding human nature is really only just beginning to enter maturity uh, with evolutionary psychology. I know that that's going to be a hot button topic for a lot of people, but frankly, evolution is becoming the lens under which absolutely all sciences must be understood. For a very brief overview, I'm just going to link to a recent meta-study that was conducted. Essentially, in the field of psychology, a group of volunteers decided to reproduce several psychological studies. Uh, in their attempts to reproduce, they could essentially only validate about 36% of the studies that they looked at. I don't think that's necessarily a surprise for a lot of people, but I think if you look at the success of evolutionary psychology against the lens of what we're finding out is the truth about the old social sciences, I think you can see that the future is extremely bright for evolutionary psychology. But let's look at that map again, and 
I think when you look at that map, you have to confront another serious reality. It is a fundamental assumption of most rational thinkers of our era that the Enlightenment values will inherently lead to human prosperity. Basically, all you have to do is make humans happy, healthy, and wise, and everything will be fine. But it seems to be turning out that, in point of fact, that just doesn't work. Basically, humans did not evolve to confront an Enlightenment-era world. What humans have evolved for is survival, and human survival is much different from what a lot of people seem to have assumed. It turns out that humans do not respond to having plenty of food, and having clean living conditions, and having a great job. They don't respond to that by having more children that they care more about. Uh, what they respond to that by is having too few children to maintain the species. Meanwhile, poor people in war-torn parts of the world are the ones who are having all the children that are going to be necessary to maintain the species. Now, a lot of people immediately argue with this and say, hey, well, the world is overpopulated. Isn't it a great thing that we are lowering the population? That might be true if our economies were set up to handle this, but they absolutely are not. I mean, just imagine the American economy if a few years from now it becomes the absolute status quo across the board Everybody in the country is going to have to get used to the fact that for the next several years, all of your stocks, all of your investments are going to lose 5% per year for several years until the economy corrects itself down to a survivable level. Now that's absolute madness. It's just not how our economy works. It's not how our investment works. It's not how our capital system works. A lot of people have tried to argue that modern capitalism does not necessarily need growth to maintain itself. But I think that's absolutely ludicrous. It's one of those things you can pretty much just look out your window uh, and you realize our country has to have growth. If you're not growing, you're stagnating, and stagnating is a very, very bad problem. Now, a lot of people argue, and I absolutely understand that argument, that while this is sustainability is necessary, people are just going to have to get used to it. Absolutely, but what's going to happen in the meantime? How are we going to make it through the transitionary period where a bunch of people who have stocks out there are suddenly going to lose a bunch of money, where loans can't be guaranteed to be repaid, where investments will, as a whole, not pay off? And that's at least going to be necessary until such a time as our economy has shrunken to a level that's sustainable. But I might as well be putting sustainable in air quotes because what everybody thinks of probably as a sustainable economy is an absolutely ludicrous notion. To have a sustainable society, we don't just need certain economic targets to be met. We don't need certain, you know, futures to be in a certain range. What we need, for example, is citizens to be concerned with the amount of farmland that's available in the country and whether or not an urban center is investing enough in the farm surrounding it to actually grow the food necessary for the people that live there. That is, unless you think you can magic up some way that millions of trucks driving into cities every day to bring a bunch of food and supplies for the people who live there is somehow magically going to be made sustainable. If you don't see why that's a ridiculous notion, you might want to brush up on your thermodynamics. Now, of course, people have argued for a long time on the sort of economic impact of this, on the long-term unsustainability of runaway growth that's required for our kind of economy. That's one thing. But now we're looking at imminent collapse. We're talking about not collapse in 200 years, not collapse in 500 years. We're talking about collapse within one or two human generations. Countries like Japan and Germany are breeding themselves out of existence at such a fast pace that we're essentially talking about the need for them to become sustainable several generations ago because these problems are now runaway and are already quickly going toward their conclusion. But people retort, hey, the population's going down. Doesn't that solve the sustainability problem? Well, no, the world population is actually still going up. There are people out there who are breeding, breeding in massive numbers. As a quick refresher, you need about 2.1 children born to every female in order to sustain the population. And sure, countries like America are only at about 1.9. And sure, that drives the numbers down, but countries in Africa are reproducing at rates of 20 and 30. And the highest countries are recorded at rates above 34. So the sustainability problem is getting worse, and the countries who would be expected to lead the charge, the West, are breeding themselves out of existence. I'll look at these topics more in future videos, but for right now, I'll go ahead and sign off. This is Reverend Winnebago. Have a good one.